Yellow Jumbo Grand Canyon. The southeastern corner of the Tibet Autonomous Region of China. It is the deepest canyon in the world. And at 505 kilometers, is slightly longer than the Grand Canyon in the United States, making it one of the world's largest. The Yellow Zambo originates near Mount Kailash, the most sacred mountain in Tibet. It runs east for about 1700 kilometers, draining the northern section of the Himalayas. The gorge bends at Mount Namjabarwa, the 27th highest mountain in the world, and cuts its way through the eastern Himalayan range. The river continues through the lower gorge to the Indian border, becomes the Brahmaputra, and eventually enters the Bay of Bengal. Unlike most of the barren and uninhabitable lands in Tibet, Yaluzambo Grand Canyon is an oasis full of trees, flowers, grasslands, and rivers. It is a peach blossom spring, the mystical Himalayan utopia, the Shangri-La itself. And our story begins here. This is Mini, a beautiful and tranquil Tibetan village sitting on the southern bank of the Yellow Zambo River located at the base of the snow-capped Namchabarwa. In August, the flowers are in full bloom, and the air is thick with the sweet scent of flowers. Nature has been generous to this village, with magnificent mountain ranges, a gorgeous river zigzagging around it, and clouds whiter than snow. Mini is one of the loveliest and most colorful places in Tibet. However, today is not just any other day, and Mini village is no longer quiet. There is a send-off ceremony going on. A boy is about to leave his hometown. And people from all the neighboring villages are here to bid him farewell. The boy's name is Chili Wenju. Within a few days, he will leave for a college in eastern China, a far more developed region thousands of miles away. He will study accounting for the next four years and potentially move to a bigger Tibetan city such as Lhasa or Shikaza when he graduates. For many young Tibetans, going to college in inland China is a precious opportunity. Beautiful as it is, there are almost no jobs in this part of Tibet. Without a college diploma, the chances of finding a good job are poor. Elder Tibetans know this by experience. That's why they insist on sending their young ones to college, crossing half of China. Today's send-off ceremony is hosted at a beautiful two-story Tibetan-style garden restaurant. The air is filled with fragrance and the sound of laughter. The elderly villagers are sitting in the restaurant chatting and having tea, while most adults are busy preparing food.
Young children in the village also look forward to this ceremony. Their parents bring them here to be inspired, but in reality, they are here to meet friends, play TikTok, and have a lot of snacks. Teenagers, on the other hand, play a rather crucial role in this ceremony. They are the receptionists. Their duties include greeting other villagers, assisting the host family, and distributing food and beverage. By serving the community together, a strong bond between them is created. At about 10:30, the send-off ceremony begins. Jili Wengju and his parents are standing in the middle of the yard, receiving hadas and blessings from friends and families. Hada is a ceremonial scarf in Tibetan culture that symbolizes purity and compassion. It is presented on ceremonial occasions, including births, weddings, funerals, graduations, and the arrival or departure of guests. When given as a farewell gesture, it symbolizes a safe journey. People hold the hada in both hands high. Then they extend forward and bow to present it to others. When the hada is parallel with the top of the head, it shows the most sincere respect and best wishes. To friends or family members, the hadas are laid around the neck of the receiver. When the hadas are overflowing on the receiver's necks. The teenagers would quickly stuff them into plastic bags, making sure there is always enough space for more hadas. Next to the line, there is a donation chest made of pine wood. After offering hadas, villagers will donate some cash for the boy's journey ahead, and help compensate for the cost of this gathering. About an hour later, the hada offering is over, and the feast begins. What we are looking at is a traditional Tibetan vegan feast. Today's menu includes rare fungi from the forest, yak milk tofu. And 15 veggie courses. The staples include rice, flatbread, and mantou. After villagers get their food, they either find a spot inside the restaurant or in the garden. It was a fantastic meal. The food I had was unrealistically delicious. The father of the boy is exceptionally joyful today. Back in his days, he was also one of the candidates that could be sent to college. However, due to the lack of connection and a bit of luck, he was rejected by the admission committee. His friends, who were approved to go to college decades ago, all had a different life. The father doesn't talk much, but from the way he speaks, it is clear that he still couldn't get over the memory of being rejected. Seeing his boy finally getting this opportunity means a lot to him. When the feast is over, some villagers stay and help the host. Some go back inside the two-story restaurant, having tea and snacks. And some 
go to the archery range shooting arrows. Since this part of Tibet is covered with dense forest, almost as old as the canyon itself, the hunting culture has been thriving for thousands of years. Local ethnic groups such as the Tibetan, the Mongpa, and the Mishmi people have been hunting with bows and arrows since the beginning of time. For the local people, archery is more than a hunting skill. It is a way of life. And like many other village restaurants in this region, our restaurant also has an archery range. And some locals just can't wait to show off their skills. The arrows they are shooting are so-called whistling arrows, a special kind of arrow that is used for hunting, and the whistle is designed to startle the animals. And just like that, the send-off ceremony is over, and the boy is ready. Most people in this village have never left this canyon. And many of them have never even heard of the Chinese city the boy is about to go to. But that won't stop the villagers from going out of their way to support and bless their young ones. Send-off ceremonies like this have been happening everywhere in Tibet for centuries. The clothing and the food may have varied over the years, but hadas are always there, blessings are always there, and the purpose stays the same. It's about family, it's about community, and last but not least, it is about hope and the future. This is Jingwu Show. Thank you for tuning in.